What's up, everybody? It's your favorite carriage for the horse's favorite nerd. Today we are looking at the MMC reformatted Befriend and Betray. Their take on the DJD Nickel and Pet. I got a feeling we're going to have a lot to talk about here. So let's get started, and we'll get started with accessories. So Nickel comes with three faces. The, ah, this set is $125 face. The what? This set is $125 face? And lastly, the yay, at least it's not $135 face. All three faces can be swapped out by unscrewing the head connection at the back of the actual head. It comes with these four accessories that you can swap out with the pieces that you saw in the opening footage so that you can have the initial land mode configuration, air mode, which is done just by lifting up these rockets from down to up swapping out the wings and swapping out this kind of dorsal fin which i can tell you re removing the turquoise piece was not easy in fact i i had to scratch up the base of the the top of the cockpit there with a flathead screwdriver just to get it out because it was next to impossible uh what they should have done was had a way to get it out so to speak from the underside uh, but they didn't so good luck if it's i wouldn't do it unless the alternate modes are really worth it to you and c mode which has the original wings but they're now out to the side and then has the two armatures here which i think you just take off for the other modes but it doesn't hurt anything to have them in there and then they hinge here and you have this piece, a little piece to swap out also. If this is, I mean, if this is of importance to you, it's there. And you get a set of six tools, uh, all painted silver. Uh, hammer, pliers, maybe screwdriver, flathead, little drill bit. So that's cool. She'll hold her tools and you can store them on these little pegs here. You also get the Voss kind of sniper weapon. Nice work done here. Some red paint here, 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 here. Metallic turquoise paint red up there. You get the kind of bipod element there. And this extends and retracts. This can come off. I'm not sure why you'd want to, but it can. There might be a reason for it that I'm just not familiar with. And you have the same turquoise metallic here that can come up. And it's on a hinged swivel so it can become like the little viewing screen for what you're shooting at. All of that stuff is super cool. Very well done weapon. One last little thing, it has this handle for the bigger hands and then you can put pressure here, which does make me a little nervous, but I haven't had any issues. Remove that and then you can use this smaller adapter piece and plug that in. And once you have that, she'll hold the sniper rifle. It's very heavy and has a tendency to kind of come out fairly easily but she will hold it. You get an alternate head with an alternate ear for the pet, if, it, if you so desire. Silver paint, green paint on the eyes, as opposed to red paint, and the mouth works the same, and it's also kind of a bear to get, but works the same way as the other one, and then you just insert it on the ball peg there. Get your leash, and you get this plastic piece here, and then the chain, it's a metal chain interesting link but it looks like kind of accurate which is cool all in black and then you have the handle as well and to utilize the leash you just plug it in to the under under the chest of the pet so let's talk about this alt mode and i guess we'll put these things down and we'll keep these out so obviously as we talked about you can have some different configurations they try to give you some gimmicks these are a softer plastic so they shouldn't break or anything so that's pretty cool and then you get these bits here which i guess give it a little bit of character and i think you know it does a good job i think it does a really good job of doing what it's supposed to do honestly uh, but it, what it's supposed to do just unfortunately just isn't that impressive at the end of the day But I, I think that's not necessarily an MMC issue regarding design, but more of a character issue and then That's a matter of subjectivity, isn't it? You know, what's interesting to me may not be interesting to you and vice versa But here it is. It doesn't really roll at least not on my mat because the wheels are a little tight uh, But if it doesn't feel it, let me try it on the no, I'm not having any luck on the table either, so it's not the mat. And I like the color breakup. I don't know what else to really say about it. It's, it's ultimately a, a whole bunch of fine. And then you have Tiger Tracks. Take your rocket packs, move them down so that you can get access to these pieces. You have to move the wheels out first. And then move these arms out. This hinges on a number of systems. The dark turquoise and then the teal. You want to maneuver at the first one between the two colors so that it will snap back at the kind of opposite location 
and from whence it came. <sighs> this thing is tight, Mac. God bless. All right. There. Then push up on the canopy here, and then they will split, rock back down, and plug in to the side here. But you have to, in order to make that happen, you have to slide this piece out so that it'll line up. And that part is fairly intuitive uh, because it's the only way you're gonna get it to line up properly. And let's see. Not, not a super fun process. There, there's one. I'll get the other one off camera. Then from the back, Lift the head up and spin it around. Then move your arms back to the front. Rotate the shoulder pad. This should all kind of make sense because it's just sort of fixing it so that the, the kind of parts work. There you go. Same for this side. This is a really uh, tightly toleranced figure. Um, frustratingly so. Uh, where the the pieces don't move uh, extremely smoothly, which is a bit of a bummer. And then just raise up your backpack, sort your rockets. I'll get it cleaned up, we'll take a look at her. All right, let's talk about the figure. So the head is nicely painted. We have the two shades of like the turquoise and then the teal, the red on the meter, and then I think even, no, the needle isn't painted, which is a bummer. And then you have the antenna, which are painted. Uh, this one's a little looser than this one, but it's there. And then the metallic blue eyes, black on the mouth, that looks good. The head itself is on a ball peg. You get up, down, and the swivel, and then the head, the ball peg is connected to the neck flap, which is on a hinge, which gets you more up and even more down. But it's not really locked in place, so it ends up being a bit of a kind of pain. Waist swivel, no problems there. We have the darker turquoise painted here, 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 and then the metallic red. All of that looks good. The metallic silver up there looks good. No issues. Then we have the light blue, that's plastic, I believe. I could be wrong about that. Now we have the shoulders. The shoulders are basically universals. You get up to there, there's a little cutout in there that allows for the 90 degree movement. And then the swivel, and you get this little like rotation there, which is not really part of the, the kind of proper engineering, but it's there. I guess it's a bicep swivel ultimately, but it just becomes a bit unsightly. We have a single hinged elbow, that's nice. And then we have this piece that flips up for a little uh, stuff. And then we have the wrist, which swivel and have a little bit of up and down, a little bit of in and out. And I'm guessing that, yeah, they're on ball pegs. That's why. We have the metallic pink down here on the pelvis. Articulation on this arm is the same. I wish this all stuck in a bit better. We have universals for hips, which is interesting. <laughs> they get you out to there forward and back, so no issues range-wise there. Thigh swivel, double jointed knee, that gets you the full run. Nice red paint on the lower leg, and then we have ankle tilt here. It would have been nice if this was like pegged in so that you could get the rocker, but as a result, you get no rocker, but you do get a tilt forward and back. Some silver paint there on the wheels as well. And then if you wanna go with toe tilts, you have those as well. And then there she is from the back. As for the pet, it's actually surprisingly cool. Much cooler than you would expect. The ears do rotate on swivels. You have the mouth hinge. This one's a little loose. It's actually hard to get open. And then once it's open, it's like hard to get stuck in a pose. The teeth are painted silver. We have the kind of gray versus green situation. The green is mostly plastic, if not 100%. The gray is painted on and then the silver is painted on. Uh, articulation wise it's pretty fluid so you got this hinge here the main will kind of articulate a bit as well and then you have the ball peg where it plugs in so you can get down you can get up you can get the confused cat look so all of that kind of works you have these bits which are on shoulder um, on the shoulder which are on ball pegs so you can get a good range out of them and then you have a universal here so you get a hinge out to the side plus you get some butterfly movement inside the chest and then you get the swivel now you get this elbow here but it doesn't quite work right because it's for robot mode I guess 
and then you get the ankle hinge. So you're pretty limited for the kind of pet mode in the front, unless I can find a way. I guess you can go like that. That should work. Yeah, that'll work. I'm sorry. It just doesn't look right. You know, it looks it looks like you're looking at the unfinished side. But yeah, that works. And then you get the ankle tilt up on a double hinge and down and no rocker. The claws are painted silver and it seems like you get a toe hinge. It's on a pin, but it's pretty tight, more so down than up. For the abdomen, you got a ball peg here at the hips. So that gets you, you know, a slight bit of movement around. I think enough to make it worthwhile. On the bottom, you have the missiles, which can rotate out to the side. And they're on universals as well, which is surprising. But you can get forward and back out to the side, thigh swivel. You got the reverse knee, and then the ankles are on ball peg, so you will get a little bit of a rocker there, and then a toe hinge. And then the tail is actually done pretty cool. It's like two systems of hinges connected to ball pegs here at the base of the butt. So once you have it together, it will actually give you this, like the, you know, the wiggle waggle, so to speak, and even a little bit of a swivel, you know, like that's pretty impressive. Like that's impressive engineering. So I, I got to give them credit on that. So yeah, the good news is, is that the pet, uh, which is, I mean, I think the more kind of necessary character of this of this set is done pretty well. Tiger tracks. And let's transform them. So the head comes down and plugs into the chest. You would think that that plug would be a bit more secure, but it's but it's not. And then you have the main, which will come down and sit inside of this T section there on the back and that actually fits quite well. Straighten out the legs and then these are just the feet and they have uh, heel spurs at the bottom to flip out. I just popped off the ball peg there. Cause, and you know, it's the same thing. Like I'm, I'm kind of glad when stuff like this happens to better illustrate, but that's just the tightness of this hinge back here. And as I've kind of said with this set, a lot of the tolerances are super tight. So there's that, straighten this one, Bring the hips down. Make sure that your kind of rockets are rotated towards the middle. And then you can collapse the chest down into the stomach area. Rotate the shoulder pieces. So I think this is it anyway. So that the majority of this silver piece kind of fills in that gap. So it's almost, at least for the most part, a 180 degree turn. And then that will sit kind of most flushly, so to speak, in there. And then you have these bits and you can rotate your shoulder things around and rotate your doll paws, paws, doll paws around to the back and then your hands around to the front. And this is kind of uh, worth talking about, but there's a lot to finishing off this guy, so to speak that's mainly about sort of putting it in anatomical sense. So when you have the legs and you know that the knees don't bend like that because you're not an idiot, you just turn it around that way and then turn the foot around, turn them around that way and then turn the foot around so that it just so that it just kind of makes sense, right? And lastly, take the tail, split it, move out these armatures to the side and then you just sort of fold them down. There's like, there's no real clear way to do it. And I'll get them cleaned up, we'll take a look at them. So he's fine. <laughs> he's fiddly, man. They're both fiddly. Like they're fiddly and too tight at the same time. But let's go through it. Head is on a ball peg. You get good down, a little bit up, side to side. Silver paint and red paint on the face. You get the ball peg that we talked about. Uh, bat talked about it. Talked about in um, in cat mode or whatever. A little bit down, mostly just the swivel. Nothing really up. You have uh, the silver paint and then the kind of belt. And that kind of looks nice enough, I suppose. And then you have the same universals for the shoulders. They work the same way. Bicep silver works the same way. Double jointed elbow gets you a great range. Fists are on ball pegs. Same for the other side. You get the same universal for the hips down here. <sighs> it's limited range. If you had the rockets facing inward, you can also remove them as you saw. <laughs> get them out to the front and back swivel, double jointed knee, ankles on a ball peg down at the bottom, heel spur, and then toe hinge. There it is from the from the back. I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not taken back by this set. Uh, I feel like I got taken for a ride on this set, but 
We'll look at them together with the DJD to see if it's worth it, and then we'll have some final thoughts. So there they are with my crash box dio, and I got room for one big guy here and one big guy there, and like, you know, I, I don't know, I think you'll agree, I, I just don't feel like they add a whole lot to the display or the set, so... I don't know. I mean, they look nice together. They, there is something about them, you know, the same way there's something about seeing the Dinobots together or something like that, like that team. But I'm just not sure if it's ultimately worth it. Final thoughts wise, let's talk about the negatives. There's plenty of them. For one, this set is $125. Neither one of them feel like $60 figures. Neither one. And the reason why is because they're both somehow flimsy and too tight all around at the same time. I think this set would have been much better priced between the $80 to maybe the $100. But I think even that is a stretch. I think 60 to 80, it would have felt like you got a good bang for your buck. This just doesn't feel good. Of course that's subjective in terms of feeling. But what's not subjective the tolerances are too tight both figures feel flimsy the reason why they feel flimsy is because a lot of stuff doesn't lock in just sort of sits in place and then nickel has the lack of ankle rockers plus the kind of like unfinished look of transformation along her flank it's just it's just not a very polished set period there are some positives though the alt mode for the pet does look good and it does work well and that's why I bought this set. I just feel like I overpaid for this set a lot. And I'm not really one to gripe about money. Like, I, you know how I roll. If it's worth it and you're happy with your purchase, then ultimately it was worth every nickel. I'm just not entirely happy with my purchase and it was a pretty nickel for what I ended up getting. This doesn't feel that much superior to the main line, honestly. It is ultimately superior. The paint is superior. The materials are superior, but it doesn't feel that much superior. The good news is the sculpts on both are pretty good. There's a lot of paint on both, which is unexpected, but welcomed. And they do look pretty good with the team, but ultimately they're kind of accessories for the team. So you have to ask yourself if $125 is worth it for a couple accessories to the DJD. Now, if I need to pay for this in order to get my two big guys, and I, and, well, I, I did. So there's your answer. I just really wish they would give us the stuff that we want, how we want it, not the stuff that we don't really want, how we're not expected to getting it. And I mean, in terms of quality. So it's not a recommend from me. Sorry. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. Yeah.